So check it. Let me test the sound of this microphone on my lapel. I'm getting on stage because I've got stories to tell. I want to warm up the crowd, maybe have a sip of his hot cocoa. Because I don't drink coffee, because for me, caffeine is a no-no. But I had my scarf on because it's kind of cold outside. And I, the police stopped me because I was kind of trying to drive. A little too fast, but I got here with class, and I'm telling you right now, TEDx Brooklyn, guess what we do? We smash. Is Brooklyn in the house? Good, my name is Tony Blackman, as he said. I am an artist. I am a poet. I am a rap lyricist. And I love the idea of freestyling. Freestyling is when we create something off the top of our head. It's when we create spontaneously in the moment. Freestyling is improvisation. And it comes from the world of hip hop. I'm a part of hip hop music and culture and I've been that way for many, many, many years. And one of the challenges when talking about hip hop is that the immediate response is people get visuals of what is available to them in mainstream media and on the radio. So just to clear the record and set it all straight, the hip hop that I'm talking about, there's 2% that we get to see, and then there's the other 98% that exists around the world. We can go to countries where electricity goes off at 8 o'clock when it gets dark, and yet these people, somehow, they're dancing, they're rapping, and they're making beats. That's my hip hop. All right, so we begin there. Why is freestyling important? Well, I want to make the case for being able to think on your feet. It's important because once we are able to think on our feet, it means that we are being more authentic in our communication. It's not even literal thoughts that are going on. It's actually the, the heart connecting to your thoughts and us allowing ourselves to trust what comes out of our mouths. It's also about letting go of the fear, the fear of making a fool of ourselves, the fear of falling down in front of people, the fear of making a mistake. And when we work towards being able to think on our feet, to freestyle, we, let, we get rid of those fears. And imagine what kind of freedom comes with being able to do that. So I'm freestyling right now. This is my first time using a clicker. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm really excited about it. So as we think about that, I want to be able to demonstrate that to you today by taking some topics or maybe getting a couple of you up on your feet. So if you're interested and you're open to it, just raise your hand or a woohoo, and I'll, I'll call. Oh, we have one? Do we have two? No? OK, we have two. OK, so my background is I'm the first hip hop artist to be invited to be a cultural envoy with the US Department of State. So I've traveled, and I've been able to do this work. I also got support for my work from the Equine Green Foundation and Soros Foundation to bring artists in people together who wanted to freestyle. And so I developed this process that is, it works. And it allows those people, and it allows all of us to be able to get open. This idea of getting open means getting into the zone. So there are runners who get open, like when you're, and you're going through your thing. There are musicians who play instruments who get open. And it's that transcendent, that, that transcendent moment where you almost disconnect from your body and you start to go with the flow so much so, it's almost like it's not you presenting. So these projects that I've run, where I'm like a girl on Freestyle Union, have allowed me to almost like a scientist study this idea of energy, of flow, of being in the moment. And I've witnessed it in Brazil, working with young people and with artists, as well as through my travels throughout Africa, in places like Ivory Coast, and in places like in Southeast Asia, where I was able to go through Indonesia and through Taiwan. And I was amazed that this African oral tradition, this thing, this rap music, which started from this ancient tradition, has now it's gone all over the world. And it's this phenom because it allows people to become one with themselves when they allow themselves to go into that space. So there we are with the cipher. Cipher, the word, represents 360 degrees. It's about completion of thought. It's about giving and exchanging information, energy, and ideas. The cipher is not that complex of a concept. It really is the circle. And if we look at our history as human beings, every culture 
has ciphers. We drum in ciphers, we eat in ciphers, we pray in ciphers, we dance in ciphers, and so it's no coincidence and it shouldn't seem anything special or unique that, it, that hip hoppers also started to get into ciphers. Now I wanna talk about all of us who freestyle on a daily basis, like teachers. Teachers are some of the illest freestylers on earth because they have to improvise in the classroom every day. And then there are the ministers and the preachers who in order to move their parishioners to get the people open and into the zone to catch the spirit, have to be able to let go. And so it, that is how we move ourselves forward by letting go so we don't have to hide inside the closet or the cupboard so that we can actually operate from a space of being free. Now according to, what's his name, Jan Herring, he's a phobia treatment expert. He says that 5.3 million American people have phobias, social phobias and social anxiety. But there are even more people who have anxiety of public speaking, like it's the worst thing that could ever happen to them in their lives possible, is the idea of getting on stage in front of others. I used to be on the speech team when I was an undergrad Forensics, anyone ever heard of forensics, individual events? No, I see. Forensics is what the speech and drama team is called in, a, in, a, um, in terms of the circuit, the competitive circuit in college. And I was a scholarship competitor because I couldn't make it on the volleyball team. I realized I was a walk-on and I realized I wasn't good enough, so I, I knew that I could run my mouth well, so I went to the speech team director's office. And it was there that I started to discover myself. I started to compete, I started to win in all these different categories, poetry and prose and drama. And I avoided doing impromptu and extemporaneous speaking. Why? Because it scared me to death. The thought of it made my palms sweat until we got a new coach. And it was a teammate of mine who overslept for district championships. And the coach said, we're gonna have to cover his event or come up with $800. We didn't have the 800 for our team, so he started assigning categories. You take poetry and prose. You take drama. You take informative speaking. You take persuasive speaking. And Tony, you take impromptu and extemporaneous. It was right then that I knew for sure that he did not like me. And we had this little relationship because I went to the trainings for impromptu speaking, but I avoided competing. So there I am, about to faint, and I decided I, I was the only girl in these competitions, the only person of African descent, and it looked like I was the only person who wanted to throw up. So I decided to just make the best of the moment and do it. By the end of the day, they posted finals, and guess what happened? I made finals. But it made me even sicker, because it meant I had to do it again. So there I am, I end up placing third and fifth, and on the ride home, it was about a two hour drive back to the city where I went to school. I, could, I, I couldn't figure out, like I had this false confidence, external confidence inside of me. I had never ever truly been a confident competitor. It was all performance, but none of it had authentically come from my center and come from my heart. And so I kept it moving. And I knew that as a hip hop artist, it was something different I wanted to do. And I started to study people like this guy here, KRS-One. He's a hip hop lyrical legend. And what's fascinating to me about KRS-One is that he has the capacity to enter a room, enter the stage, and just through five or six lines, captivate and control the attention and the energy of an audience of people. And I wanted to be able to know how to do that and to be able to master that, and to be able to share that with others. And that's what I did with the Cypher workshops that I started to do. And so with that in mind, I know there were a couple people, if you could come over here to the side, so um, I don't know if there's a mic, if there are any mics available for us. But they're gonna get mics for you in just a second. So with the Freestyle You Surfer workshop, we started to gather, and we would have random poets and rappers coming to sit down and jam with us. And so we would use topics, introductions, storytelling, debate current events. We take proverbs like, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Our patience is a virtue. We would also have ground rules, such as the no battling rule. And anyone familiar with hip hop music and culture knows that battling is a serious part of the tradition. But I found this martial arts philosophy really applies to 
becoming a better freestyler. Because as long as I'm focused on an opponent or an enemy, I'm not focused on myself. And if I'm not focused on myself, I can't become better at what it is that I'm doing. So here you are, come next to me. So we've got two folks here, Michaela and Eddie. You ready? Okay. So does your mic work? I believe so. Yes, no? Yes. So we're checking oh. the mic. Yes. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a topic or two from the audience. Hmm? Community and experience. experience. Com community, experience in Brooklyn. Okay, Brooklyn. Okay, all right, you ready? Community experience in Brooklyn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an improvisational spoken word piece for you right now, but we're gonna make sure we need everyone's energy in the audience to kind of float towards the stage so they feel supported. You feel supported? I guess we can get there. <laughs> okay. So, so community, so I want you to think of all the things that come to your mind when you hear the word community and when you hear the word experience, okay? So when you hear the word community, what comes to your mind? My mind, I think of what? What do you think of? I think of, um, I think of little kids, I think of old people, I think of Italians sitting around the table eating way too much spaghetti. Um, I think of gardens and people out in them getting their hands dirty and throwing dirt at one another. Um, I think of people walking each other home at night when it's too far to walk and finding somebody else to walk them back and keeping it going all night long. What do you think of, Eddie? Uh, think of a crowd. Think of everybody going their own way. Mm -hmm. I see, um, I always see a taxi in a super meeting. Uh, everybody um, trying to get on a cab, everybody trying to um, Trying to get there on time. Yeah. Um, I see people gathering around okay. to see a game, to go to a concert, um, okay. trying to. So you get see along. people going to events, to yes. concerts, sporting events, holding taxis, in motion and movement. Yes. Community, here's our first piece. You guys ready? Community, make sure you put the mic here when you talk. Okay. Good. You ready? Sure. So we're going to look out here. Folks, you guys ready? Can you snap your fingers like? No, no. Community and experience. I want to tell you about a kid, a kid named Prophet. A kid named Prophet with a brother named Messiah. They had a great mother. They had a great mother because she looked at those children and she said, I have visions for my sons. I have visions of greatness in small babies. I have visions of a kid who'll come to a class and say to the lady who just came in, turned around and got asked, when you sing, do you vibrate your voice? What vibrate your voice? Do you, uh, do you, uh, and, and that lady is going to say, do you mean like vibrato? He says, no, I don't. I don't know, but when I sing, I do this thing that is expressive of who I am. And now she's putting words in his mouth, but she's hearing underneath it all. Ah, Messiah coming into a room and having something to say, even when he doesn't know words, to say it with Messiah, with his brother prophet behind him saying, you see this boy, you see him 10 years from now, you see him 20 years from now, he is growing up with me, I come before him, I come beside him, I, I am behind him. I have visions. I have visions. Vision. My vision of a community is people going around, moving to the beats, going down the train, trying to catch the train, getting out of the way of others, trying not to fall on the tracks, and moving around like a flow, like an ocean, moving to the beats, day by day, minutes by minute, hour by hour. My idea of a community is everybody moving in motion together, um, in unison, day by day, hour by hour, minutes 
Five minutes. I have visions. I have visions. I have visions of a community experiencing each other. I have visions of a community loving one another. I have visions. I have visions of the small that grow as I see, as I open my eyes. I have visions of what they could be to me, to one another. I have visions of myself stepping back to see. I have visions. I have visions of myself sitting around and doing poetry. Although <laughs> I'm not a poet and I'm far from it. Um, I have visions of me becoming somebody more more to the left brain than the right brain. I have visions. I have visions. I have visions that in a place like TEDx, where people come to respect the brain and the ideas and the world and the things that are coming outside of our guts because we know what we want and need. I have visions that the people will listen and heed the call. I have visions of rough edges. I have visions of people stepping into ledges, getting as close as they can to the edges of their minds, stepping back, stepping forward, looking behind together as one. I have visions of something that has not yet begun. I have visions, I have visions of people reaching out. I have visions of people gathering around and try to expand and learn and expand their mind. I have visions. 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 I have visions of community and experience. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Michaela, and thank you, Eddie. I have visions of us understanding that the same way people play chess and the same way people go to play golf or play basketball, I have visions of a world of people understanding that freestyling can be used as a way to build their own communities. That we can gather around the table after dinner and we can freestyle together. I know to some who aren't wordsmiths that might sound a little corny, but I'm gonna tell you what, every time there's a cypher or I do a freestyle workshop, people walk out rapping and bouncing their heads. Why? Because it brings joy to be able to express yourself from your center, from your core, and from your heart. It is a critical part of the human experience to be able to be true to what it is you believe and to honor what you feel. Mastering thinking on your feet is not even really the goal. The true goal is mastery of yourself. And the benefits of improvisation, impromptu speaking, and freestyling, they're just, it's not just improving your critical thinking skills or accessing your, your uh, giving yourself greater access to creativity, but it's also building your vocabulary, your confidence, being more comfortable in your skin, being able to speak from a space that is a space of power and not being afraid of what will come out of your mouth. That's why I'm so passionate about this. So I want to close with, who's ready? Can we get this? Can I get a snap? Let's stop this. Let's, stop this. Let's try something else. Can I get vocal? I need, I'd like to get a little bit of vocal per percussion. I want to get a vocal percussion. Can everybody go like this? Okay. I need to feel it. Come on, thinkers. I know there's a lot of mind power in the room, but I want to be able to flow with you. Together. Now I need melody. I need my singers. Here we go. Where are the singers? Yes. Yes. Here we go. We're going to close this out the right way. Stop the bone, bone, bone. Everybody join in. Don't remix it. 
There we go. Check it out. Yes. There we go. Uh, check it out. That's the way we flow. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh. Mm, yeah. So check this. You got the world in your hands. Said my name is Tony Black Man. I see the flashlight. Yeah, it's flashing. I think it's my cue, the cue for me to end. But like I did at the beginning, understanding the community has us winning. Yeah, we freestyle, we let it go. We understand how important it is to flow. I keep the beast steady, ah, so what I can stay ready. Yeah, the rain outside is heavy, but that's okay, cause my name ain't Betty. It's Tony Blackman in control on this stage right now see i'm about to roll you can catch me on the twitter at with my name and you can play this freestyle game 360 the cipher set your soul free and understand that what is supposed to be let's not say stuck let's all stand together that's the way we'll make it through this crazy ass weather because climate change yeah it's very real and if you don't deal with it we gonna feel i said the pain yeah, it's going to come down. So stand up, Brooklyn. Let's hear the sound of your voice. Woo! Uh. Uh. Uh.